Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do chapter 12, which is amino acid. And we're going to focus on the subtopic of 12.2, which is the chemical properties of the amino acid. So in this video, we're going to explain the reaction of amino acid with HCl and, and sodium hydroxide, which acting as the base. Meanwhile, we're also going to explain the reaction of amino acid with the sodium nitride in HCl, where this refers to the nitrous acid test. And we're also going to look into the reaction of ammonic acid with alcohol in the presence of acid catalyst, where this whole process here is known as the esterification. Last but not least, we're going to describe the formation of peptide bond in dipeptide. So without any further ado, let us start. So, a reaction with HCl, as what we have known that the ammonic acids are basically N43. So the meaning of M43 is that the amino acid can act as a base and can also act as an acid. So due to these properties, which is the serine here will have an acidic group and also have the amino group here. So here is a base and here is an acid. Okay, so they are M43. Okay, and due to these properties, um, the amino acid here, for example, the serine, which is the common name, when it reacts with the mineral acid of HCl, the base here is going to take the hydrogen from HCl and this is going to break the bond. Okay, I'm going to draw it new here. They're going to break the bond in between HCl and two electrons is being transferred to the more electronegative atom, which is the Cl. So as the byproduct of as the product of the reaction, what we're going to produce is the uh, amino acid, but the NH2 group here, which is the part, this part, is already protonated because the nitrogen is going to take up hydrogen, so it becomes NH3 plus, and the Cl minus is going to be close by to the positive charge of the nitrogen here. So it's going to be close by together. Okay, and at the same time, uh, it can also react with a base in order to form salt. So we are using the same example, which is the serine. So here is the acidic part, and this is the basic part. Okay, when it is in a basic solution, which is the NaOH, so the acid gonna react with the base. Okay, so as you know that the base contains sodium hydroxide ions, so these ions here will take up the hydrogen, and the OH bond gonna be broken and two electrons is being transferred into the oxygen and hence this causes the oxygen to get the negative charge. So as the byproduct of the as the product of the reaction you will get CO minus because of the hydrogen because of the OH already taken the hydrogen and the Na plus here gonna be close by to the negative charge. Okay and the OH Attached with hydrogen, gonna form a byproduct of water. Okay. Now we're gonna look into the reaction with the nitrous acid test, which we're gonna use the sodium nitrite in HCl, and this happens at low temperature, which is at zero to five degrees Celsius. So as you know that the amino acid will contain the aliphatic primary amine group. So the reaction is similar to the one that we have learned in the primary amine, which is in the chapter 11, where the primary amine is going to react with the nitrous acid. So let's say if we have an, a structure here, which is a structure of alanine. So this is the common name. And let's say if you want to write the IUPAC name for this structure, it's going to be number 1, number 2, and number 3 here. So the carboxylic acid is going to be the priority, so it's going to be a propanoic acid. Okay, and at carbon number 2, it's going to be having an amino group. So the IUPAC name is going to be 2-amino propanoic acid. Okay, so maybe in the question, they will give you the common name as well as the IUPAC name. So you have to write it, uh, you have to be able to redraw the structure from the uh, name given. Okay, so this is alanine. So when alanine react with the sodium nitride in HCl at low temperature, what this is going to produce is the HNO2 in situ. Okay, 
So the reaction of the amino group with the nitrous acid going to produce a diazonium ion where the C and H2 here going to become C and triple bond and it's going to carry a positive charge and the chloride ion which is coming from the HCl going to be close by to the positive charge. Okay, and as what you have learned in chapter 11, the diazonium ion is going to be unstable. Okay, so when they are unstable, what they're going to do is they're going to remove the N triple bond here and they're going to release it as the nitrogen gas. Okay, and because the nitrogen gas has been released, what's happened here is going to be forming a positive charge here, which is a carbocation. And this carbocation can react with water in order to produce an alcohol. Okay, and as what you can see here, this part here is being maintained. Okay, and just add up a positive charge here. Okay, so when it reacts with water, you're going to produce an alcohol. Okay, at the same time, we can also uh, eliminate one of the hydrogen from this side and make it a double bond. So what we're going to do is we're going to produce an alkyl. We cannot remove from this side because it will not be balanced. Okay, because it's going to have five bonds. Okay, that, that is why we're going to remove it from this side using the uh, OH or Cl- to take up the hydrogen here. Okay, and at the same time, the positive charge can react directly with the chloride ion. Okay, and this is going to produce a haloalkyl. Okay. And this is going to give four uh, possible products as what we have learned in the chapter of amine which refers to the product of the primary amine. So we're going to produce nitrogen, gas, alcohol, alkene and haloalkene. Now we're going to move on to the next reaction which is the esterification. So ammonia acid can react with excess alcohol in the presence of the mineral acid for example H2SO4 or HCl as a catalyst in order to form ester. Let's say if you have an ammonia acid here, which is with reacting with an alcohol. So here we have the same structure, which is amine, uh, alanine, which is two amino propanoic acid. And here we have ethanol. Okay. And as you know that in esterification, the OH group from the carboxyl and the hydrogen from the ethanol part are going to be removed as the byproduct of water. So what is going to happen here is that the C and oxygen here are going to be bond together in order to form an ester bond. Okay, so here is an ester functional group. And this is going to remove a byproduct of water. Okay, and at the same time, as what you can see here, NH2 here refers to the amine group, which is basic. So when a base react with an acid, the base is going to take up hydrogen and this, uh, this part here is going to be protonated in order to form NH3+. Okay, there are the pertambahan satu hydrogen. So, they will undergo esterification. At the same time, the basic part of the amino acid is going to also react with acid in order to be protonated. So, this part here is very, very critical because many of you will be forgetting about this. Okay, so ensure that uh, you protonate the amine part here. Okay, now for the last reaction, which is the formation of peptide bond in dipeptide. So basically, when two amino acids react together, a water molecule is eliminated and a dipeptide is formed, where this happens via a process known as the condensation. So now let us look into an example. So let's say if we have alanine, and it's going to react with another alanine, which is the same type of the amine, uh, with the same type of amino acid. So what's going to happen here is that the OH and hydrogen are going to be removed. Okay. And what happened here is that the CO and the NH here, which is the blue color, will be connected together. And this is going to produce uh, a function group of amide. And they are connected together with a peptide bond or amide bond okay and this structure here is known as dipeptide because they are the 
uh, melibatkan dua amino acid. So, it's going to be dipeptide. If it involves three amino acid, then the name is going to be tripeptide. If it involves more than 30, then it's going to be polypeptide. Polymer kan, dia ada banyak. Okay, so in this case, because it involves two, it's going to be dipeptide. And the byproduct here is going to be water. Okay. Now, we're going to look into the um, re with the same reaction, but now using different type of amino acid. So, when using different type of amino acid, we can get two different combination, and it depends on the which amine group react with which acid group. Okay. So, in order to understand this better, let us look into the example. So, let's say if we have alanine, and then our different type of amino acid is cysteine. Okay, so the same process is going to happen where OH and H are going to be removed. OH from the carboxylic group and hydrogen from the amine group. So it's going to be connected together via the formation of the peptide bond or amide bond. And water is going to be removed as the byproduct of the reaction. So the alanine is on the left hand side and the cysteine on the right hand side. So the name is going to be ala and cis. Okay, kalau ada pertambahan lagi amino yang lain, so it's going to be ala, cis, ala lagi ke, tak kisahlah, whatever the amino acid that you have on the right hand side. Okay, so this might be a possibility number one. So, kita menggunakan carboxylic group of the alanine and the amine group of the cysteine. Okay, but now I can also get a possibility number two, where... I can use the carboxylic group of the cysteine. Okay, just now I'm using the amine part of the cysteine. Now I'm using the carboxylic group of the cysteine. And then I'm using the amine group of the alanine. So the same process is going to happen, which is OH and H is going to be eliminated as water. And the C double bond O and H, and H the purple color here, Going to be connected together, and this connection is known as the peptide bond or the amide bond. And because of the cis is now on the left hand side, so we're going to write it as cis dash ala. Okay, and the byproduct here is going to be water. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.